Hey, I'm John Cannell. And today on Preppy Kitchen, I'm showing you how to make an easy, versatile pizza dough. So let's get started. First off, in the bowl of your stand mixer or a big bowl if you're making this by hand, add three quarters of a cup of warm water. It's about 100 to 110 degrees. And if it's a cold day and your bowl is ice cold, just run it under some hot water like I did earlier, swish it around and dump it out. That way the yeast will be nice and happy because hot water can go ice cold if you put it in a cold bowl really fast. To our warm water, we're adding a quarter ounce packet or seven grams of active dry yeast, not instant yeast. In this video, you'll discover how to make pizza dough and how to use it to make a delicious pizza. It's so simple and easy, and you might just not go back to store-bought again. From garlic knots to stromboli and calzones, even sweet treats, this dough can do it all. Our yeast need a little bit of food to wake up, so I'm adding one teaspoon of granulated sugar in here. You could also use honey or brown sugar instead if you like. Give this a mix and set this aside for five to seven minutes or until you see a nice foamy head on top. That means the yeast have woken up and they're alive. If there is no frothy head, your yeast are not in good shape. So do not proceed. Start over again with the new batch. The yeast might be old, maybe the water was too hot. We don't know, but your pizza dough will not rise. So it must be foamy. By the way, if you wanna double this recipe, which I do all the time, my kids love making pizza dough at home and they do it by hand from scratch. So you can totally double the recipe. All you have to do is double everything except the yeast. You could double the yeast if you want, but you don't need to. They can handle that much more flour really easily. It's been five minutes and my yeast is nice and foamy. Come take a look. Bubbles everywhere. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, but you love delicious things, hit that sub button. There's two new recipes every week and always something delicious around the corner. Time to add the flour in, two cups or 240 grams, and you have a choice. Today I'm using all-purpose flour. You have a ton of options though. If you want a chewier pizza, go for bread flour. If you wanna have a thinner, crisp pizza that has good chew, use double zero flour. If you're wondering why bread flour is different, it just has more protein or gluten, and that gives you that chewy characteristic that some people love in their chocolate chip cookies and pizza. All right, for some contrast, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and we're also adding in two teaspoons of sugar. So we have a total of three in the recipe. And once again, if you wanted to use honey, you could, brown sugar, that works too. We're also adding in one tablespoon of olive oil. There we go. Now we're gonna pop this into our stand mixer. When my kids and I make this at home, they get two big bowls, two measuring cups for the water, and they mix it all by hand. First with a wooden spoon, and then they just knead it on the counter. It's a great way to spend some time on the weekend because it gets some energy out, it's really tactile, and it's delicious at the end of the day. We're gonna mix on low for about a minute or until the dough comes together, and then we can increase speed to medium low. My doughs come together and now we're gonna increase speed to medium low and run the mixer for about five minutes or until it comes together in a ball and has some elasticity to it. If you're doing this by hand, wooden spoon is out and once it's come together in a shaggy mixture, you can dump it out onto the counter and get to kneading. You will need to flour your hands and have some flour ready at the countertop because it can get sticky. Okay. Just examining my dough, it's been five minutes, but honestly, while quite stretchy, it's very wet. There might have been a little bit too much moisture in the air, maybe you added a bit too much water, who knows, but in either case, a tablespoon or two of flour will fix everything. And conversely, if your dough seems really dry, just add a few tablespoons of warm water in, a tablespoon at a time, until it comes together. The pendulum can swing both ways, and it's not your fault. There we go. Two and a half tablespoons of flour worked some wonders and now my flour looks appropriately hydrated and it's sticky and cohesive, but it's not sticking to my fingers. This is optional, but I always like to finish my dough off by hand and just give it a couple kneads so I can make sure it's appropriately elastic. Lightly flour your countertop. All right, transfer your dough to your countertop. 
and you're just gonna give it a good stretch. Whoa, that's very nice. This doesn't really need anything, but if you were making this by hand, you're gonna knead it out by pressing away from you, bringing it in, pressing away, bringing it in, and you can alternate and add some flour to your hands as needed. This is like the opposite of making a cake where you don't wanna overmix your dough because it'll activate the gluten and it'll give you a chewy, bready cake. But for pizza dough, you want it to have a beautiful chew and nice structure, and you're gonna build that structure up through kneading. Here, however, my mixer did all the work for me and it has a nice bounce, it's totally cohesive, and this is ready to go into an oiled bowl in a nice, warm, cozy place. Lightly oil a large bowl, work the oil up the bowl, and now we're gonna transfer our dough to the bowl and just turn it around a few times so it's oiled all over and doesn't dry out. Cover this up with a damp cloth or some plastic and we're gonna let this sit in a nice warm, cozy place for about an hour until it's doubled in size. I just so happen to have a proofing drawer specifically for this, but you can put the light on in your oven that warms it up appropriately or even warm your oven up to 100 degrees, then turn it off and then put your bowl in. We'll be right back. If you want some extra flavor in your crust, try adding a teaspoon of one of your favorite dried herbs. You could add rosemary, oregano, even Italian seasoning, or half a teaspoon of garlic or onion powder. These are all totally optional though. My only point is that you can make this crust your own and it's so versatile. Towards the end of your rise time, preheat your oven to 450 degrees. It needs to be screaming hot for this pizza. After an hour, my pizza dough is doubled in size. Look at this guy, so pretty. Oh, I love that jiggle. Right now you have a choice. You can use a pizza stone. Mine is lost, I don't know where it is. Or you can use a baking sheet and you can either roll this out on a counter, you can form it with your hands, or you can just spread it out on the baking sheet. If you're doing that, lightly flour it or grab some semolina or cornmeal and spread that around. But don't add too much because nobody wants like a big bite of flour or cornmeal when they have their pizza. Okay, punch your dough down. There we go. That didn't quite fall as I wanted it to, but that's okay, it happens. So right now you're going to spread your dough out into a circle, and I like to kind of lift and pull and press. So I don't think you really need to use a rolling pin at all. Just push it out and it'll keep its shape. The dough's been relaxing while it rested, so you should find it pretty easy to spread it out and it won't pull back. And don't worry about it being a perfect circle. No, this is a homemade pizza. It can be totally amorphous, that's fine. Okay. You do wanna have a thicker edge for the crust though, and if you want, you could grab some cheese, tuck it in and roll it over, have a stuffed crust. The options are truly endless. So do your favorite thing, form it up, and then it'll be ready to go. This is the part that my kids love the most, by the way. For a classic cheese pizza, go ahead and just spoon your sauce right onto the middle. Gently spread it about. Leave a little border for the crust. And we don't want our pizza to be soggy, so don't add a lake of sauce. Just go ahead and spread a nice thin layer. Finish your pizza off with some mozzarella, your favorite toppings, any other cheeses you love, maybe some fontina. Our pizza's ready to go into the oven, 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes or until the crust is golden and the cheese is melted and bubbling. In you go. Give your pizza a slice and it's ready to enjoy. How could you say no to pizza? It's delicious and I love this crisp crust that has a great chew and is the perfect vehicle for delicious pizza. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my bread playlist.